<laughs> Thinking of others as someone dear. Having developed equanimity, we can begin the first stage of the seven-point practice, which is cultivating the attitude of thinking of all others as being as dear to you as your mother or father or friend. Here, of course, the teachings take into account the idea of beginningless lifetimes, so all other sentient beings are considered to have been our mother or father or friend at one point or another. This is the way we try to relate to others and to develop a genuine sense of connection. The reason this practice is traditionally considered so important is because in nature it is predominantly mothers who play the most critical role in nurturing and bringing up their offspring. In some animal species both mother and father remain together to look after their young, but in most cases it is just the mother. There are some exceptions, of course. There are some species of bird where the mother hardly participates at all in the building of the nest. It is the male that works hard to build the nest while the female just looks on and inspects the result. It then seems quite fair that the male takes greater responsibility in nurturing the nurturing process. However, such cases, cases are rare. It is for these reasons that traditional Indian and Tibetan texts single out mothers as an example of how we should relate to other beings. In fact, the Tibetan language has coined a special term for dear old mother sentient being, and the expression has become so deeply embedded in people's psyche, it has a poetic ring to it. Nowadays, whenever people raise gender issues in the context of Tibetan culture, I tell them that for me, the whole idea of mother sentient beings and the Tibetan expression that goes with it is a good example of how motherhood was valued in Buddhist culture. In the traditional literature, it is understood that this profound recognition of all sentient beings as being like one's mother is based upon the notion of successive lifetimes so the whole question of rebirth and past lives comes into the picture here. The Buddhist teachings emphasize the need to understand the possibility of rebirth on the basis of understanding the nature of consciousness. The point is made that consciousness is a phenomenon that arises due only to a previous moment of consciousness. Matter cannot become consciousness. As regards the connection between mind and matter generally, one can contribute towards the causation of the other, but in terms of an individual continuum, consciousness must be caused by a preceding moment of consciousness. Reflecting on the kindness of all beings. The second element of the seven point cause and effect method is reflecting upon the kindness of all beings. In your meditation, you focus on the kindness of others, especially in the context, context that they have been your mother in other lifetimes. And this naturally leads to the thought, I must repay their kindness. I must acknowledge the profound kindness they have shown me. Such feelings will arise naturally in someone who is honourable, ethical and what we call <laughs> civilised. Once you recognise all other beings as your kind, dear mothers, then naturally you will feel close to them. With this as a basis, you should cultivate love or loving kindness, which is traditionally defined as the wish to see others enjoy happiness, and then you also develop compassion, which is the wish for others to be free of suffering. Love and compassion are two sides of the same coin. This is taken from chapter where we find it, uh, called the seven point cause and effect method. And those were the two first ones. And the book, as you can see here, is the Dalai Lama's book of transformation. <laughs>